Zach here just made that comment. It's been a while, and I said, well, I've just been waiting on you to show up. So here he is today. This is Zach Sogelman and his horse. What do you call his horse? Buck. Buck. My eight-year-old thing. Kind of fits. His eight-year-old son named him. He said it's a word he can relate to every now and then. He wants to use a different word that rhymes with that when he's riding him. But I've spent a little time with Zach before we turn this camera on so we can discuss some things and work, with, work on some things with this horse. But now I want to I want to let you guys see what I'm going to ask Zach to do with this horse. But before we throw the saddle on and you crawl back up there, can you tell us a little bit about this horse's history? You don't have to give us the long version, but what you've done with him, why you bought him, how you bought him, that kind of stuff. Zach, go ahead and put your 
approach this horse in a manner that always shows this horse if he has to move his feet, you'll give him the freedom to do that. So even while you're saddling him, if he had to move his feet, I would direct his nose and let him move his feet some. Maybe even let him move his feet enough to where he said to me, could I please rest? But I would need to have all my, my gear handled in a manner to where if he was moving around, I wouldn't get tangled up in it. Does that make, that make sense? Yeah. Once you can show one, in my opinion, that you value their ability to use their gift, which is the, the, the ability to be mobile. Once you prove to a horse you value that gift, in my opinion, they don't worry about it as much. Because everything we do with them comes across to the horse and it reminds them that you value that, which means you don't restrict them from it. And that, to me, is the quickest way to get one to relax, especially when you get on them. Because, listen, if I'm standing somewhere, sitting on a horse, and he gets bothered and he wants to leave, and I just say, oh, that's fine, just go that way. If I can't stop you, that's fine, but could I at least direct where you're going? Normally, that horse doesn't go very far, and he's like, okay, can we slow down now? I don't even really have to ask for it. But if I'm sitting on that horse, and I feel that he says to me, I have to leave, and I'm trying to tell him that he can't, when was the last time somebody told you you couldn't have something that you really wanted? And how did you react to it? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> you got children. If you take a kid that their mind is set on one thing and one thing and you tell them they can't have it, that is the only thing in the world that matters to them. And my kids do everything they can to prove to me they can still go. It has to be their mother. <laughs> Maybe it's her. All right, so why don't we, <clears throat> talking about this idea of helping one get more relaxed, when their head is around to the side. Because this horse has been handled a bunch and the groundwork that Zach has done with him up to this point, I felt like he was ready for us to do what we did, which basically we just tied his head around to one side, fairly short, and then we used our flag and our stick just to teach him how to move around. Okay, and the idea, if you wanna go ahead and come around this side and tie his head around so the camera can see what it looks like, and then we'll move him around like we did. The only reason that I'm saying, again, because Zach has done groundwork with this horse before, I felt like we could do this. If we tie that to that saddle and that horse has a fit, then I don't have to stand so close to him that I get myself hurt. But also, he can struggle with that a little bit while he's moving around. And I don't necessarily have to turn loose at the lead rope because I'm not even holding it. So sometimes I need to set things up in a manner to where if my horse is going to struggle at it a little bit, I get him to the other side of it before he gets the fits. So he doesn't understand, hey, if I throw a fit, I get out of this. Does that make sense? Okay, so we set him up just like that. If you want to grab your flag there, Zach, I'll kind of get out of the picture. We'll, we'll try to keep him on this half of the round pin just because I got this camera set up where it can't move. <clears throat> and then the goal was to just get this horse to move his feet so you can just get him moving around like we did earlier, Zach. So Zach's got the flag where he can make some noise. He can make some quick movement. He can use rhythm in that flag on the horse's body to get his feet moving. He can take that flag and rub on that horse to help him relax. But he can introduce this horse to this idea of noise and movement while the horse is moving his feet, but also while that horse has got his head in that position. Okay, now before I ever tie one's head around like that, I'm gonna spend a lot of time on the ground just teaching them to give me their head and get them in a, in a frame of mind where they're pretty soft before I ever tie it solid like that. Zach had already done that amount of groundwork. Now when we first did this today, he was a little tight in the in the very beginning. He definitely wasn't off. But it was, it was, was way, it was way more tight. 
and just rub on him for a second. So when we first did this, whenever we'd let this horse's feet stop, he was pretty impatient on this side and he would he'd go up and down with his head quite a bit because he wanted the release from that rope. Now he's a lot more quiet. So go ahead and untie your lead rope. Just don't give him his head back just yet. So there you can see his head moving a little bit. That horse is smart enough that he's gonna get impatient as soon as Zach starts to untie that. So I'm gonna say untie it, but then keep him there for a minute or two until his head's quiet, he's not pulling on you, and then you can give it back. Let's do just a couple minutes of that on the other side. If you don't mind, go ahead and bring him back here to the middle of the pen. I'll grab his ladder for you. We'll set him up starting there in the middle. recommend if you guys do something like this I'm not a fan of tying one's head around like this and just leaving okay and there's no way I'm gonna leave a horse in this position for 45 minutes at a time because they're gonna get really heavy leaning on that lead rope their necks gonna get tired so if you're gonna do this the goal is to stay here with them and get their feet moving teach them how to follow their nose how to move their feet and how to relax when their nose is tipped around to one side. So then when you do it, once you're up there, your horse doesn't get bothered. Because human nature, anytime we're sitting on a horse and they have a tendency to want to get tight, act like they're gonna run off, act like they're gonna buck, human nature is gonna wanna pull on the reins. We're almost always better off sake because my camera's stationary we're going to get him moving around using this whole pit so there's going to be a, a dead spot over here where you guys are going to lose Zach and this horse <clears throat> when we ask the horse to stop and rest we'll try to do it on this half of the round pin so you guys can see we'll try not to stay in that dead spot any longer than we have to but here's the goal guys if you're going to crawl on a horse in my opinion and they're in a green stage the goal is to Build the frame of mind that you want on the ground that's going to open the door for that horse to use his gift when you get up there. And we both agree that this horse's gift is his ability to be mobile. So if I'm doing things that restrict or, or confine or inhibit this horse in any way of being mobile, then I'm taking that gift away from him. Okay? If I had a God-given gift, and it was my default response anytime I got in trouble, and you tried to take that gift away from me, I wouldn't want to hang out with you very much. Because that's my safety blanket, okay? And they're wired that way. So, you mentioned you use 
introduced some sideline hobbles on this horse in the beginning. I grew up with all of that. We tied more than two feet together when I was little. But over time, I saw that it created a lot of issues once I took that stuff off because I, I was not building an approach on the ground that was creating this frame of mind here. Okay, and I've, I've said this for a long time and I tell my boys all the time and I tell my followers, some of them that beat me up because I don't wear a helmet or my boys don't wear a helmet. Here's what I, I always say this, the, the number one thing that's gonna keep you the safest when you're on a horse is not your helmet, it's not your bridle, it's not your night latch, it's your horse's frame of mind. So that being said, when I get up there, I need to also have the same idea that my approach when I get on you needs to say the same thing that I was saying on the ground. I don't want to restrict your forward movement. So kind of like I challenged you a little bit when you were on him earlier, when you got up there and I'm saying, just leave his head alone, we're gonna get him moving. Because if you feel like you got to pull on his head every time he speeds up, in my mind, you ain't got no confidence this horse can use it to you. You're worried about him using it to you. Let's open the door, because here he's proven it to you right now. If you could have this mentality in this horse from this day forward, I think, and not have to work that hard to get it, but you have to show him. The most valuable part of this horse is his gift is mobile. Go show him how to be mobile, and then just direct him. Just don't restrict him. Okay? Alright, so, climbing up there because this horse was so bothered with him getting on, I'm going to have him crawl on and off at least once each side before he stays. So I'm just going to step back away from the horse enough that he's not really got to worry about me while Zach's crawling on. So you guys that are watching, <clears throat> Zach's got a halter and lead rope on this horse, but he doesn't have the, the lead rope tied around on the other side so he could pull on both sides at the same time. So if he picks up on that lead rope, all he can do is tip that horse's nose right now to the left because the lead rope's on the left side. <clears throat> what we need to understand as the rider is one rein offers direction two reins, we humans often use two reins as restriction, okay? If my horse is bothered and I use two reins, he doesn't usually feel or think of it as, oh, I'm just trying to communicate a signal to him. He comes across as a horse, I'm trying to restrict him from going somewhere. It bothers him even more. So I wanted Zach to let this horse experience him only having one rein today. So all he could do, even if he pulled on it the whole time, is just direct the horse either to the right or to the left. To switch side, he's gotta put enough slack in that lead rope to flip it up over that horse's head. So for a horse that used to move away a lot with you climbing on and off, and, and you've done a lot of work with that before you got here. Yeah. When you got here, 